We are being asked to estimate the area between negative 2 and positive 2 below the curve of y equals square root 1 plus x squared. And we're going to use four trapezoids to do this. So I've drawn the curve, and I've also drawn in the trapezoids, the four trapezoids. And we can see that based on the interval width and the number of trapezoids we're using, the interval width is going to be equal to one unit. So I'm going to calculate the area of each of these trapezoids. So I'm going to do the first one here. So I'm going to plug in x is negative 2. So I end up with square root 5 plus. I plug in x is negative 1. I end up with root 2. And that's all over 2. And I'm going to times that by an interval width of 1. And to that, I'm going to add on the next trapezoid. Next trapezoid has the left edge height of 2, the right, head, the right side edge of 1, divided by 2, and again, this has an interval width of 1, plus, and the other trapezoids are just symmetrical, so we end up with root 2 plus 1 over 2 times 1, plus the last trapezoid, which is root 5 plus root 2 over 2, times 1, and that gives us our four trapezoids that we're calculating. Okay, so these are the four areas I'm calculating. Okay, so when I add this all up, working this out on my calculator, uh, it looks like I have an area of 1.825 here plus 1.2. 0, 7, and that's symmetrical. Okay, so when I work that out, it looks like I have 3.65. I'm gonna, I should just add that and divide by 2. So 1.825 plus 1.207 and times that by 2. I end up with 6 point, 6 6.064 units squared is going to be that the trapezoid area that I've calculated. Okay. Um, we want to start talking about overestimate and underestimate. So we did that in the context of right and left Riemann sums. And the issue in Riemann sums was, was it was a graph increasing versus decreasing? In the case of trapezoids, we can see that this right now, we've, what we've done, the trapezoid is actually an overestimate. Because you can see that there's a bit of area above the curve that the trapezoid includes. Okay, so this, in this case here, if I was to ask if this is an overestimate or underestimate, we would say that this is an overestimate. Now, it's important to note why, okay? In the case of Riemann sums, it was when the graph was increasing versus decreasing in right edge versus left edge. In the ca case of trapezoids, it's a different issue. So it's important to make sure that that we don't mix Riemann sum overestimates and underestimates with trapezoids. With trapezoids, it's to do with the concavity. So we are concave up. So our trapezoids are like this, and we overestimate. Okay, we have this extra area here. If we are concave down, so that's concave up, if we are concave down, the opposite is then now true. If we have concave down, our trapezoids then are underestimates. Okay, because we have this little bit extra up above the trapezoid, which is not part of the curve. So this is when it's concave down. So the I'm just going to write concave down, so our negative concavity, this is an underestimate. 
And it's easy enough to determine this both for Riemann sums and for trapezoids if we just draw the picture. Okay, if we just sketch a quick diagram, we can tell whether it's overestimate or underestimate. It's important to know what the criteria was. With Riemann sums, it was slope, up or down. With trapezoids, it's going to be the concavity. Is it concave up versus concave down? Okay, so if it's concave down in this example that I've drawn here, this is a separate, it's not part of this problem. If it's concave down, then we have an underestimate. Okay, in this case, it's concave up, it's an overestimate.